Recently, Olama announced that the OpenThinker models were added to the library. This includes a 32 billion parameter model and a 7 billion parameter model. Both are fine tunes of Quen's 2.5 models at 32 billion and 7 billion parameters, respectively, using a dataset they generated called Open Thoughts. This dataset leverages the model DeepSeek R1 to help generate the questions and answers. So, what did they do? Essentially, they took questions from a bunch of common benchmarks and used a tool called Curator from Bespoke to ask the questions to DeepSeek R1 and collect the answers. Curator then cleans up the responses to ensure there aren't any repeats or other problems and generates the dataset. If the question was science related, it is assumed that the answer is accurate. For math and puzzle questions, it's verified by an LLM judge compared to a known answer. And for code questions, the code is executed and unit tested. That dataset is then used to fine tune the two Quen 2.5 models. I've already talked about what fine tuning is, so that should be, at least at a high level, pretty clear. So we end up with two models with reasoning. Both are converted to GGUF for Olama to use and are available on olama.com in Q4KM, Q8, and FP16 quantizations. Now in this video, we will look at my test harness and try to grade the models based on a set of questions and criteria that I came up with. In my live streams about DeepSeek R1, it was suggested that I shouldn't grade a model based on its thinking stage, even though that's part of the output of the model. I think it should be included since it's part of its output, but in this video, I'm gonna consider both circumstances, ignoring the thinking stage, and then also grading the output using the thinking stage. But time then does factor into it. If a model takes longer than a few different thresholds, before the first response, like, like kind of like time to first bite in web performance, then I'm gonna take some points away. But that only really applies when thinking is ignored. Then you can decide which is the right way to do it. The machine this is running on, it's a doozy. It has eight H100 GPUs, each with 80 gigabytes of VRAM and well over a terabyte of regular RAM. So if it takes longer than five seconds after the model is loaded, then it loses a point. 30 seconds and it loses two points. 60 seconds, well that's three points. And if it takes longer than two minutes to start answering, so finish thinking, that's six points off for that question. But the equivalent on most regular GPUs would be many, many, many more minutes. So I think this is pretty fair. Okay, let's load up the model starting with OpenThinker 32B4KM and ask the first question. Without using the letter E, write a three sentence story about a cat chasing a mouse. After a few seconds, it starts thinking through the question. And for almost a full two minutes, it keeps thinking. And the answer is, the cat saw a rat, the rat ran swiftly, the cat sprang towards it. That's definitely a simple three sentence story. And there isn't a single E in it. Often when asking DeepSeek R1 that question, it would add a few E's. So, so far, this is looking great. It's a bit of a trick question because mouse has an E in it, and it called that in the answer. Now, I wouldn't say this is especially creative, but it definitely stuck to the constraints of the question. Response was relevant, and the explanation was clear. The length, of course, is terrible because of the thinking that's in the output, but everything else is great. So, out of 21 points, this gets 17. If I disregard the thinking stage, it gains three points, but the nearly two minute delay drops three points. So they both get the same score. Let's move on to the next question. If you stack all the playing cards in a standard deck vertically, 
with each card rotated 45 degrees clockwise from the one below it, what shape would you see when looking down from above? So this one churned for a, a long time. Four whole minutes. And it didn't even finish. Up until now, I updated the context length from the Olama default of 2K to 8K. But it looks like that can be not enough for a single answer with this model, let alone a conversation. So I updated it to use a 16K context instead. And then I asked again. This time it took two and a half minutes. The thinking stage was very in depth and went in circles a bit, but I would say it did really good on everything. Of course, with the exception of length, getting 18 out of 21. Disregarding the thinking stage gets three more points, but the time penalty drops six points for a total of 15 out of 21. Okay, let's move on to figure out an analogy. If apple is to fruit, as hammer is to tool, create a new analogy following this pattern using completely different concepts. It comes up with a lot of great options, earthquakes and sports and more. This one takes about 95 seconds to finish the thinking stage. The answer is fantastic. Tree is to plant as car is to vehicle. And then gives a great explanation. Again, apart from the length, it's pretty perfect. Though I don't think there were any constraints to worry about. So we're now at about 50 out of 60 or 47 out of 60 if we're just regarding the thinking stage. So calculating that out, we're so far at a 83 or a 78 if you're ignoring the thinking part. Next is explain quantum entanglement to a five-year-old using only items found in a typical kitchen. This one finishes in just shy of a minute, and we have an interesting answer. I had seen a few variations of the same answer involving cookies, but this one's a bit different. So we're gonna need two cookies and a cookie jar. But there's a demonstration of adding a chocolate chip to one and observing a new chocolate chip that just appeared on the other. Of course, this isn't really going to happen. So it's taking a bit of a leap. If it hadn't suggested that this would actually happen in this case, I would have liked it better, having the child imagine the results. I think telling my daughter Stella this will only result in screams. And she's a really, really smart six-year-old. Yeah, I know, all parents say that, but in Stella's case, it's really true. So I'm gonna knock it for constraints and correctness and explanation and logical coherence. And it's incredibly long. So we're up to 63 out of 81 and 61 out of 81 respectively. Next is create a haiku about artificial intelligence that contains a paradox. So there is one constraint, and that's on the number of syllables in each line. Five, seven, five. After a minute and 45 seconds of thinking, we got this. Program for truth. Lies hidden in circuits hum. Logic's sweet deceit. That's four, seven, five. Pfft, damn. During the thinking, it came up with a bunch of others, and some of them were correct, but the final choice was wrong. It seemed to think that programmed is three syllables. It was definitely two. In the thinking, it gets confused with plurals as well. So I'm gonna knock it for constraints and correctness and a course length. So we're now at 79 out of 102 and 76 out of 102. Next comes a more creative one. If colors had temperatures, what would purple taste like? Explain your reasoning. 59 seconds later, thinking is done and we get this. We see a color to temperature association, temperature to taste connection, cultural influences, and a final answer. Chocolate and plums. Nice. There are no constraints, but I gave it high marks on the rest, except for length. So we're now at 91, out of a max possible of 117 points, and 89 out of 117. So 78 or a 76. Next, design a new animal by combining three existing animals. Explain how its unique features would help it survive in an urban environment. 
This finished thinking in 32 seconds, and that was the fastest. And the herbivore is a mixture of a rat, a pigeon, and an owl. That's a pretty scary creature. Apart from length, it seemed pretty great. So we are at 106 out of 135 for both of the options. That's a 79. Oh, and to get that final number, I'm just dividing 106 by 135. Okay, so next, what's wrong with this sequence? 1, 4, 9, 16, 23, 36, 49. Fix it and explain the pattern. Now, every time I have asked this of DeepSeek and OpenThinker, it finds the answer in two seconds and then keeps on thinking for a while. This time it only churned for another 25 seconds. And thankfully, it chose the right answer in the end. I don't think there's any creativity or constraints in this, so the scores so far are 118 out of 150 and 120 out of 150. So let's move on. Create a brand name for a luxury soap made from volcanic ash and moonflowers. Explain why your name choice would appeal to high-end consumers. 35 seconds later, and we got this, Obsidian Moon. The name hints at a captivating story, unique and not commonly used, a treasured material. I gave it great scores on everything, well, you know, apart from length. So 133 and 136 out of a maximum possible of 168. We're almost done now. If silence had a shape, and that shape could dance, what would its signature move be called? Describe the movement. A minute ten of thinking, and we got an ethereal hush. The ethereal hush is a graceful dance move where the shape of silence glides with otherworldly fluidity, embodying calmness and stillness. <sighs> That's pretty nice. There aren't any constraints here, but the rest is great, except for the length. So 145 and 148 out of 183. Now let's do some programming. Write a function that takes a string and returns true if the string contains all the letters in the word goal. G-O-A-L. In any order or case. False otherwise. Show an example input that would return true and one that would return false. This took about 25 seconds. It converts the case and checks if the letters are present. I pasted the method into a program and it works perfectly. No constraints or creativity here, but we're now at 163 and 167 out of 204. Finally, we have a translation task. Translate this short paragraph into Spanish and French and Japanese. Then explain how the meaning of cold changes in each translation. The ice cream was so cold it hurt my teeth. But I wasn't cold, it was a warm summer day. It took a minute 35. It ended up with these three translations and an interesting discussion on the meaning of cold in each case. I then passed the translations back through Google Translate, and apart from the Spanish one being about a toothache versus a tooth, it did great. I ended up with 180 and 184 out of 225 or 80 and 82, respectively. So this was with the 32-bit model at Q4KM. So the next obvious question is how did it perform at 8 and 16-bit quantizations? I tried a few of the questions and they seemed about the same, though took a little longer to think. So how about the 7B parameter? Well, that was much worse. I was actually surprised at how much worse it was. With a lot of models, the 7B and 32B models aren't that different. If you saw the two answers from the two models side by side, you wouldn't be able to tell which was which. But with this one, it was noticeably worse at smaller sizes. Now the question you probably have may be around the config of the model, like temperature. For everything but the context size, I am intentionally sticking to the defaults for Olama. There are an infinite number of variations that I could make, but for this grading, I want to stick to what everyone has without much effort. Then you might ask, why didn't I do the basics around making good prompts? I want to see what the model can do without me having to work around the weaknesses of models. 
So I intentionally left the role the model should take, the format of the output, and the other basic prompt engineering concepts out of the prompts. This will be consistent across all the models that I look at. I don't know yet if this is the best set of questions, and I think I'll update the criteria used to grade things. I'll also be adding an automated grade using Claude and maybe another model soon, and maybe open up grading to your inputs as well. But that's another problem for another day. I'd also like to incorporate tokens per second into grading, but it'll take a bit more thought. What's the right way to incorporate that? I would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Do you like this model? How about DeepSeek? What do you think of using the output of DeepSeek to train models like this one? It's definitely an interesting approach. Well, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video really, really soon. Thanks. Bye. No water.